Hello friends, warm welcome in this video that is the primary lymphoid organs. Friends, a number of morphologically and functionally diverse organs and tissues have various functions in the development of a immune response. Based on their functions, they are categorized as primary, secondary and tertiary lymphoid organs. Primary lymphoid organs are the site of maturation of lymphocytes. The primary lymphoid organs are thymus and bone marrow, where the maturation of lymphocytes takes place. Secondary lymphoid organs are the organs where the actual encounter of antigen with the body molecules takes place. That means it is the site of encounter with the antigen. The spleen, lymph node and various mucosal associated lymphoid tissues such as gut associated lymphoid tissues are the secondary lymphoid organs. These organs trap the antigen and provide site for encounter and provide site for interaction with the antigen. Whereas the tertiary lymphoid organs import lymphoid cells during an inflammatory response. The tertiary lymphoid organs include cutaneous associated lymphoid tissues. The ability of any stem cell to self renew and differentiate depends on the structural organization and cellular function of a specialized anatomic microenvironments known as stem cell nikki. The sequestered regions are typically populated by a supportive network of stromal cells. Stem cell nikki stromal cells express soluble and membrane bound proteins that regulate cell survival, proliferation, differentiation and trafficking. The organs that have microenvironments that support the differentiation of hematopoietic stem cells actually change over the course of embryonic development. However, by mid-late gestation, hematopoietic stem cells take up a residence in the bone marrow, which remains the primary site of hematopoiesis throughout the adult life. The bone marrow supports the maturation of all erythroid and myeloid cells and in humans and mice, the maturation of B lymphocytes. Hematopoietic stem cells are also found in blood and may naturally recirculate between the bone marrow and other tissues. This observation has simplified the process used to transplant blood cells progenitors from donors into the patients who are deficient, for example patients who have undergone chemotherapy. Whereas once it was always necessary to aspirate bone marrow from the donor a painful process that requires anesthesia. It is now sometimes possible to use enriched hematopoietic precursors from donor blood, which is much more easily obtained. Unlike B lymphocyte, T lymphocytes do not complete their maturation in the bone marrow. T lymphocyte precursors need to leave the bone marrow and travel to the unique microenvironments provided by other primary lymphoid organ, the thymus, in order to develop into functional cells. In case of birds, a specialized organ is present which is known as Bursa of Fabricius, responsible for maturation of B cells. In human being, the bone marrow is a primary lymphoid organ that supports cell renewal and differentiation of hematopoietic stem cells into mature blood cells. Although all bones contain marrow, the long bones, femur, hemorrhous, hip bones like ileum and sternum tend to be most active sites of hematopoiesis. The bone marrow is not only responsible for the development and replenishment of blood cells, but it is also responsible for maintaining the pool of hematopoietic stem cells throughout the life of an adult vertebrate. Long human bones contain two types of marrow. One is present at the tip called as red marrow, which is particularly responsible for the formation of red cells. Whereas the another marrow is called as yellow marrow, which is responsible for storing fats in these specialized cells called as adipocytes. The spongy region which is interconnected by rods of bones is called as trabeculi. The bones are covered with nerve, blood vessels and stromal cells. The adult bone marrow which is a paradigmatic structure contains several cell types that coordinate hematopoietic stem cell development which includes osteoblasts, endothelial cells, reticulocytes and sympathetic neurons. Osteoblasts are versatile cells that both generate bone and control the differentiation of hematopoietic stem cells. 
the endothelial cells line the blood vessels and also regulate hematopoietic stem cell differentiation reticular cells send processes connecting to cells to bone and blood vessels and unexpectedly sympathetic neurons which can control the release of hematopoietic cells from the bone marrow a microscopic cross section reveals that the bone marrow is tightly packed with stromal cells and hematopoietic cells at every stage of differentiation with the age however fat cells gradually replace 50% or more of the bone marrow compartment and the efficiency of hematopoiesis decreases the choices that an hematopoietic stem cell makes depend largely on the environmental cues it receives the bone marrow is packed with a hematopoietic cells at all stages of development but it is likely that the precursors of each myeloid and lymphoid subtype mature in distinct environmental micronuclei within the bone marrow evidence suggests that the industrial nuclei that is the area directly surrounding the bone in contact with the bone producing osteoblasts and the vascular nuclei which is the area directly surrounding the blood vessels and in contact with the endothelial cells play different roles industrial nuclei appears to be occupied by quiescent hematopoietic stem cells in close association with the osteoblasts that regulate stem cell proliferation the vascular nuclei appears to be occupied by hematopoietic stem cells that have been mobilized to leave the industrial nuclei to either differentiate or circulate In addition, the more differentiated cell is farther it appears to migrate from its supportive osteoblasts and the closer it moves to the more central regions of the bone. For example, the most immature B lymphocytes are found closest to the endosteum and osteoblasts while the more mature B cells have moved into the more central sinuses of the bone marrow that are rich served by blood vessels. Finally it is important to recognize that bone marrow is not only a site for lymphoid and myeloid development but it is also site to which fully mature myeloid and lymphoid cells can return mature antibody secreting b cells that is plasma cells may even take up long term residence in the bone marrow whole bone marrow transplants therefore do not simply include stem cells but also include mature functional cells that can both help and hurt the transplant effort the second primary lymphoid organ is thymus t cell development is not complete until the cells undergo selection in the thymus the importance of the thymus in t cell development was not recognized until the early 1961 when j f a p miller an australian biologist work against the power of popular assumptions to advance his idea that the thymus was something other than graveyard for cells it was an underappreciated organ very large in pre pubescent animals that was thought by some to be detrimental to an organism and by others to be an evolutionary dead end this is the reason why several influential investigators could not repeat the data and question miller's conclusion some speculated that mouse strain he used was peculiar others that his mice were exposed to too many pathogens and their troubles were secondary to infection dr miller responded to each of these criticisms experimentally assessing the impact of hemoectomy in different mouse strains and in germ free facilities his results were unequivocal and his contentions that this organ generated functional lymphocytes was vindicated elegant experiments by dr miller james gauss and others subsequently showed that the thymus produced a different type of lymphocyte than the bone marrow this cell did not produce antibodies directly but instead was required for optimal antibody production it was called a t cell after the thymus its organ of origin immature t cells are known as thymocytes miller is one of the few scientists credited with the discovery of the functions of entire organ no one expected a new anatomical discovery in immunology in 21st century however in 2006 hans remer rodwald and his colleagues reported the existence of a second thymus in mice the conventional thymus is a bilobed organ that sits in the thorax right above the heart 
roadwork and his colleagues discovered thymic tissues that sits in the neck near the cervical vertebrae of mice. This cervical thymic tissues is smaller in mass than the conventional thymus, consists of single lobes or clusters of single lobes and is populated by relatively more mature thymocytes. However, it contributes to T-cell development very effectively and clearly contributes to mature T-cell repertoire. The evolutionary implications of this thymus are also interesting. Thymi are found in the neck in several species including the cola and kangaroo. Thymus is a flat bilobular organ situated above the heart. Each lobe is surrounded by a capsule and is divided into lobules which are separated from each other by a strand of connective tissue called thymocytes. The outer region which is called as cortex is densely packed with immature T cells called as thymocytes. Whereas the inner compartments are medulli are sparsely populated with thymocytes. The sequence of T cell maturation within the thymus is not completely understood. Immature T cells known as thymocytes or thymus cells because of their site of maturation pass through defined development stages in specific thymic microenvironments as they mature into functional T cells. The thymus is a specialized environment where immature T cells generate unique antigen receptors which are called as T-cell receptors or TCR and are then selected on the basis of their reactivity to self MSC peptide complexes expressed on the surface of thymic stromal cells. Those thymocytes whose T-cell receptors bind to self MSC peptide complexes with a too high affinity are induced to die. This is called as negative selection and those thymocytes that bind to self MSC peptides with an intermediate affinity undergo positive selection resulting in their survival, maturation and migration to the thymic medulla. Most thymocytes do not navigate the journey through the thymus successfully. In fact, it is estimated that 95% of the thymocytes die in transit. The majority of cells die because they have too low affinity for the self antigen MSC combination that they encounter on the surface of thymic epithelial cells and fail to undergo positive selection. These developmental events take place in several distinct thymic microenvironments. T cell precursors enter the thymus in blood vessels at the corticomedullary junction between the thymic cortex, the outer portion of the organ and the thymic medulla, the inner portion of the organ. At this stage, thymocytes express neither CD4 nor CD8 markers associated with the mature T cells. They are therefore called as double negative or DN cells. DN cell first travel to the region under the thymic capsule, a region referred to as the subcapsular cortex where they proliferate and begin to generate their T cell receptors. Thymocytes that successfully express T cell receptors begin to express both CD4 and CD8 becoming double positive or DP cells and populate the cortex, the site where most about 85% or more immature T cells are found. The cortex features a distinct set of stromal cells called as cortical thymic epithelial cells whose long processes are pursued by thymocyte testing the ability of the T cell receptors to bind MSC peptide complexes. Thymocytes that survive selection move to the thymic medulla where positively selected thymocytes encounter specialized stromal cells medullary thymic epithelial cells. Not only medullary thymic epithelial cells support the final steps of thymocyte maturation, but they also have a unique ability to express proteins that are otherwise found exclusively in other organs. This allows them to negatively select a group of potentially very damaging autoreactive T cells that could not be detected in the cortex. Mature thymocytes which express only CD4 or CD8 and are referred to as single positive leave the thymus as they enter via the blood vessels of corticomodulary junction. Maturation is finalized in the periphery where, where these new T cells called as recent thymic immigrants explore antigens presented in secondary lymph tissues including spleen and lymph nodes. Thank you.